How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The Ranked Report. Um, got one final episode with our Volcarona team, and we're up against someone who's running triple starters. This is, like, the most hyper-aggressive team I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> really, it was Cinderace, Inteleon, Whimsicott, Dragapult, and Regieleki. Can I just go TR here? Um, what's stopping me just going stack Rilla? Um, and you might think, oh, Plenty, why don't you just go stack Tokius? You can just go for follow me, because snipe shot. Uh, Tell him on signature move, snipe shot. I'll explain it in a second. Um, I could also go a Lecky to get around that and go like back end stack. I don't think I hate. What if we go like a Lecky stack attacker? And then bring Rillaboom as a back end mon. Gastro is not that useful here, I don't think. I don't think it's a Gastro move. I think it's probably a Tokus move here, actually. Don't really hate. Yeah, I don't hate the Tokus move here. I think I think this is fine. Volk just doesn't seem that good here, if I'm being honest. Like, it can't really damage Dragapult very much. With Tailwind, it gets outsped by everything. Doesn't really like Inteleon. Don't really like Cinder that much, to be honest. Yeah, I think this makes the most sense. I'm gonna do this. Ooh. Crunch. I may need to be very careful with my stack attacker here, because there's a lot of stuff that can potentially one-shot it. Um, think Intelligent Snipe Shot, think um, Cinderace I Jump... I'm sorry, Cinderace I Jump Kick. Um, I'm mostly scared of Intelligent, which is why I led the Reggie Lucky here. Um, Rilla Cinder, okay, interesting. Um, I can see this being fake out into Reggie and high jump kick into stack. So I don't really hate the idea of. I do kind of want to keep my sash intact, but I also, at the same time, don't hate the idea of going for a Volt Switch because they don't fake out my Lecky and try and doll into my stack instead. Um, and I get my kiss in next to my stack for free, then that's a really good turn for me. So I think I'm willing to take a risk uh, on this. I don't think they ever just ignore my stack attacker, just because the threat of Trickrum is so severe. Fake out into... Yeah, okay, they go fake out of Lecky. And I jump kick into... Yeah. Um... Life Orb, okay, that's going to take a lot of damage from a Reggie Lucky here. I don't think it dies, but it's not going to enjoy it. <sighs> they do have the Glide Threat here, but I have the Follow Me Threat. So I couldn't... Can I just T-Bolt this into here? I kind of don't hate that. Or is it better going for a... Probably better to Volt Switch here, right, and Follow Me. Yeah, I think Voltage following makes sense here. That's fine. Oh, this is probably a U-turn from Rilla, right? Yeah, good move. I mean, I'm not taking any damage from this. So I don't really mind too much. Because um, they lose the, the priority threat into my Regilaki here. Oh, they lost power. Okay. Greedy, greedy. Um, that's fine. Um, I mean, Cinder's in trouble here, right? I feel like Cinder wants to switch. Who do they switch into? They don't have a switch in, actually. Um, knowing that they're going for that, I might just do follow me and T-Bolt here, honestly. Because even if they kill my kiss here, I have a rid of a switch in of my own, which I can use. Um, Cinder just protects. I want to move to Cinder. Pyroball... I guess probably Sucker Punch? Cinderace switches, that's fine. What comes in on this? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. I'm fine with that. Free damage from Dragapult. And like, what are they took it. They probably U-turn here with um, Rillaboom, but then Rillaboom's not in the field to throw my Reggie Lucky, which I'm fine with. Um, big T-Bolt damage. Jesus Christ. That's a huge paralysis. Oh my god, that's enormous. I cannot stress enough how big that paralysis is here. Um, I 
Get around it there, he comes in. Ooh, I don't like that. Not a big fan of that. Um... I mean, Protect Bolts are just super obvious here. The other option is to hard switch my Rilla into this slot and just Volt switch with the Regilecki, I think makes sense. Does it? Yeah, because that also means that I'm not taking max damage um, from Dragon Dots. I think I like this. Oh, Reggie's are in sync. Nice. They should go T-Bolt here. Okay, they do catch the Reggie lucky slot. Specs. Choice specs. Choice specs. Wee 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 wee. Choice specs alert. Oh, that's very bad. That's incredibly bad. Um. Eh. Maybe it's not the worst. Maybe it's not the worst. So I think I can pretty freely fake out Trick Room here, right? Um, this gives me a... Yeah, I think this gives me a free Trick Room. So this is... The, yeah, this is the positioning I was going for. Um, I know Dragon Ball's paralyzed, but I don't really care that much about Dragon Ball here. So I'm going to go TR. I'm just going to fake out the Regilecki. I'm pretty sure that thing is Choice Specs. That was so much damage if it's not. Um, <laughs> and I could switch here, but I can't risk taking a, a Choice Specs T-Bolt. It's just too much damage. It's just way too much damage. Uh, Eleki does switch, but I mean, what, they're in Rilla. Yeah, fine. Could have gone for the U-turn there, but I didn't, um, because I'm a fool. Um. That's a big full para. We love to see it. In comes TR. Uh, Dragapult is slower than Rillaboom here. And their Rillaboom is also slower than my Rillaboom. Okay, these are all important things to note, and things that I actually don't like that much. Um, who am I going after? I think I'm just going after the Dragon Ball, right? I don't think I want to risk them going for a U-turn here, so I'm just going to go into Tokyus. Um, I also have horsepower, which means that this gives me the option to go for Follow Me next turn. Oh, maybe I should have gone after the Rillaboom here to get around high horsepower, actually. Fake out into... yeah, fine. Maybe Fandom Force. There's dots. Okay, this is going to do, like, negative damage. Uh-oh, big damage. Uh-oh, big damage. <sighs> Lamau Psych, actually no damage. Um, yeah, I'm not scared about a Paralyzed Dragon Ball. I'm just going to Jarable the Rilla Boom here and follow me. Um, I wonder if this is Banded Dragon Ball. No, I don't think it would. Well, maybe it might be, actually. This is a lot to my Rillaboom. Mm. Hmm. Who knows? Pop goes out, that's big for me. The Lecky comes in, that's fine. Follow me. Gyro, this do big damage. Oh my god, this thing's disgusting. That's so much damage. Holy crap. Okay. Um. They do go Cinder here. Which is a little irritating. Um. the Chuffleberry, but I don't know how much that actually does for me. See, <laughs> I don't know if Gyrable kills Regilecki, because it's 150 base power. Like, it's it's always max damage. Um, how much does it do to a Regilecki? It's not killing. Okay. Um, so I need to double the Alecki if I want to kill it here. Um, or I just Stone Edge. But I don't want to get hit by high jump is the issue. I'm going to Stone Edge and follow me. I'm relying very much on this Stone Edge connecting. Go on, stack. Shit. 
And they didn't even go for the high jump kick. Crap. Uh, beast on a stone edge miss. That's very annoying, because now I just lose. Yeah. Did I need to take that risk? I don't think I did, did I? Rillaboom was pretty much dead. Dragapult's paralyzed. If I take out the regular... If I just go Gleam Gyroball into regular, I guarantee a pickup on that slot. Cinderace can only kill one of my two Pokemon. And it would have to transform itself into a fighting type to kill my... Stack. Would that even kill through Chuckleberry, actually? Ugh. It probably would. It's a very powerful move in its life orb. Um... Um, let's have a look. Sorry, I'm just doing the damage cup. Life orb. Give me a Chuckleberry. Yeah, it would've killed. Um, yeah, I lose. Um... Yeah, maybe I should've just taken the tempo there, because it's a guaranteed pick-up on Reggie, like, if I go Dryable, Dazzle, and Gleam. Would've given me some damage on Cinderace, but yeah, if they KO me that next turn, then I think I'd, I'm dead to Cinderace once TR goes down. Yeah. Like, I think an 8% chance to win there is fine. I don't think that's necessarily a bad play. I just was a bit unfortunate. Because, yeah, Stone Edge is going to be a guaranteed KO, right? Stone Edge. Oh, Stone Edge kills, yeah. Um, I guess the other option I had there was to go for um, Stone Edge and Air Slash. That way, if I miss, then I can tank a hit. No, but then I still lose a Pokemon to the Regilecki if I miss. Um... Yeah, I think going for the Stone Edge connection there was was the right move, but... Could I have done that? Mm. No, I'm relying on a Stone Edge regardless, though. I was going to say I could have Stone Edge the um, Cinder, but that's less guaranteed. I think Stone Edge is the right play there, it just didn't didn't quite work out in my favour. A bit unfortunate to lose on a Stone Edge miss, but I mean, it's 1 in 5 to miss. It's not... Oh, no, no, no. Um, it's not, like, wildly unlucky. I, I knew when I was pressing the button I was risking losing the game on that, but I think I had to I had to risk the game on an 8% chance. It's my best odds, and it didn't go my way. Alas, um, this game is about playing to your best odds, and my best odds was an 8% chance to win um, off that Stone Edge. If I connect it, I win. If I don't connect it, I lose. Um, uh, is that even true? Given that they went for Iron Head... I maybe should have gone Stone Edge and, um... I maybe should have gone for Stone Edge and Air Slash. Might have been a better move there. Because if I go Stone Edge, Air Slash... If I kill the Regieleki, even if they kill my stack... The Aleki's gone down. Stack can then KO... No, sorry, um... Tokius can kill the Dragapult if that comes in. Um... Rillaboom can fake out Cinder. And if Cinder locks into high jump kick, then I can gleam it the next turn. So I can go for like grassy guy gleam into the Dragapult slot. Um, I guess they could bring in their their own Rillaboom um, and go for the fake out. But then I can just trade fake outs and do the same thing. Next. Yeah. I don't know. It wasn't guaranteed if I if I hit that. Um, if I lose stack. I, yeah. I don't know. It's a tough situation. I, I played too passively early game to let myself get into that situation. Um, my opponent just didn't let me get Trick Room up, and I got punished for it. Um, yeah, we've got one more game to play. I uh, can't find a train at the moment, so I'm just going to cut to the start of the next battle. I will see you in a sec. Okay, we finally have our last game of the week. Um, we are up against... Um, okay, we've got Hat and Didi, Tornadus, Regio, Lucky, Dracofish, Insim. Okay, so this is like pretty quintessential semi-Trick Room stuff. Um... I need to respect the Hat and DD lead. I guess I've got a stack to deal with that pretty comfortably, honestly. Um, Gastro also seems super good here. Like, their two biggest threats outside of Trickrum are both completely shut down by Gastrodon um, in Dracovish and uh, Reggie Lucky. Like, neither of them can do anything to Gastro. So Gastro's definitely come to this one. I think I want to bring stack as well, but I also want to bring Rillaboom. Could I go, like, Rillavolk? Maybe isn't the worst idea. I'm not a huge fan of Kiss here, just because, like, Redirection doesn't really do anything in this matchup. And Lecky... Ah, uh, Lecky's okay. But I guess against Opposing Tail... Yeah, I don't... I really don't hate, like, Rillaboom, Volk, Stack, Gastro. Is that anything? Yeah, I think this is fine. 
Because if they go for the, the TR lead, I can always just um, go for a Quiver Dance and pivot into my um, pivot into my staff immediately, which puts me in a really good spot. Um, this music slaps. Um, they go Hat Insip. Ooh, that's interesting. I guess they were worried about a. A stack lead. Um, I'm very content to not trade fake outs here. Um, I'm very content to go quiver onto U-turn. I think either of those is a win for me. Um, I could also see this being like an Indeedee switch in to try and bait me into going for a fake out, uh, in which case I could be in a very bad spot if I do that. So I'm going to go for the U-turn here off the hat. Uh, if I'm calling that, actually, I think it's better to just get damage on the um, Incin, right? And then go for a Quiver Dance. I think makes the most sense. Oh, that was not actually most fair. I should have just gone for the Fiery Dance there. Um, the reason I should have just gone for a Fiery Dance straight away is because I want to switch my Rillaboom back in this next turn. I lack forward thinking. Um, I should have just gone for the Fiery Dance just to get some damage down. Um, At the very least, this forces pressure onto the um, Volk slot, but... Okay. Yeah, that should've just been a Fiery Dance. I could've just got free damage down on... Um, well, on either, really. Um, yeah, like a Fiery Dance into Indeedee there would've been nice, because it would've put it in, like, guaranteed gyrable range. Um, yeah, that, that was a bad move for me. That was a bad move for me. I should've just gone for the damage. I got greedy. I even called exactly what my opponent was going to do, um, and I still got greedy. Um, so my guess here is Incin comes in. I can see this being like Incin switch and protect. So I'm calling Incin switching in. I'm very tempted just to go body press in DD and fiery dance also in DD. The other option I have is just to go Jarable Hat, get some damage down on it, and then just to hard switch my Rilla, which maybe makes a bit more sense. Like, even if I think Rilla Booms come in, they withdraw Hat, that's interesting, okay. Um, I mean, that's fine, because, like, what the hell's Indeedee doing here? I'm going to just U-turn next turn. Um... Okay, no drain for you. Jaro's going to do about 3 damage. And then E-Force is also going to do about 3 damage. Aim at the stack. Oh, boo, he didn't aim at the stack. Um, I mean, I have to swatch my, swatch, swap my Rillaboom out here. Um... Do I go for Body Press or Stone? I think I just go for the Body Press for safe damage. I think safe damage is nicer. Um, uh, that's not the right, the right button. I'm going to body press into this, and just switch into my gastro. I need to be careful with Yawns here, just because um, yawning into a Hatterene um, is not a good plan, just in general. Indeed, he goes out into... Pretty Hat. Yeah, Hat comes back in. So that's fine. They're trying to reposition so they can get TR up again. Um, oh, sorry, not get TR up, get Psyche Train up again. But I pivot my Rillaboom out, so this ends up working out quite nicely. In comes Gastro. Body press, nice. That's a lot of damage. And they just blitz. Okay, no passing shot is really good for me there. Um, do I just body press Earth Power into the instant slot? I feel like that's not the worst play. Um. So if they hard switch in DD, I body press the I body press Earth Power the in DD, and if they don't hard switch the in DD, then I body press Incident Earth Power the Hat. Like something's dead here. Does anything on this team come in on this? No, absolutely not. Um, I guess it could be technically better to scold in case of tornadoes, but there's no way they have tornadoes in the back here. No Earth Power is always better. Um, 
Instant goes out. Okay, so this just gives me terrain control for the rest of the game. Okay, they'll get an expanding force off here, but I mean, I'm fine with that trade off, honestly. Um, I'm pretty sure this kills a DD. Um, they no longer have their precious Psychic Seed to help them against. Um, Earth. Okay, never mind, this doesn't kill a DD. Again, that Fiery Dance damage. Whoa, what? There is no way you just said Giga Drain Hattery. Oh, you're kidding me. <laughs> One of the things I'm going to lose to today is going to be Giga Drain Hattery. That gets that move? What the hell is that? No one has ever run Giga Drain Hattery in their life. No one has ever done that. <sighs> okay. How much did Body Press do to Indeedee? I don't think that's in range, is it? I may have to Body Press and U-turn here? I don't think I hate. Yeah, I'm going to Body Press and DD and U-turn probably also in DD. At some point I need to switch my stack out to reset the Intimidates. Um... Who runs Giga Drain Hat? What the hell is that? That's garbage. Uh. Hat switches, okay. Oh, is this protecting the DD? Now I lose to Dracovish, because I don't have my fucking... Oh, uh, actually, no, this is kind of okay, I think. Um... So I'll kill the Insin, I'll get a defense boost. Ready press. Does Stack live a Dracovish hit with the defense boost? It honestly might. It really, honestly, might. He's pushed. Okay, I get U-turn. I can't use Giga Drain Hattery. That's so cringe. Um, Instant going down is very nice here, but the problem is now they just start stomping me with Dracovish. Um, Volk comes in. No TR, a bit annoying, but whatever. I mean, now they have to make a decision with Dracovish, is the thing. <sighs> Do they kill Stack with a Fisher's Friend here? Dracovish. Yes. Oh, that's Choice Band. Hold on. Let's say it's Scarf. Let's say it's Choice Scarf, and let's say, hypothetically, I have a defense boost. Uh, and by hypothetically, I mean I have a defense boost. Um, I do live this Fisher's Run. That is interesting. Um, so I could set up another Trick Room here. I could also see them trying to click Trick Room here, just... Um, I think I just go for damage into the Dracovish immediately. Fish into... I live this. Oh my god, Stack Attacker is a monster. Giga Drain. Really big damage. That's gotta be body press range, right? And Hat's going for Trick Room again. Yep, yeah, I called that turn absolutely perfectly. Oh, that feels good. I called that turn so perfectly. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think their play there was they wanted, like, they didn't realise how bulky stack attacker is, basically. Um, they wanted to clear out the, um, or they thought I'd play defensively there. Um, one of the two. Because if they go Fisher's Friend there and TR, they're still in an okay spot. Um, but yeah, they were basically, I think, hoping that I'd, like, protect my Volcarona or something. Um, or, or, like, try and set Trick Room myself, in which case they try and reverse the Trick Room. Um... I think may have been their intention there, but instead I just bodied their Drake Vision, now I win. Um, <laughs> okay, um, I'm just going to body press the Ndidi. Um, is that correct? I'm just going to body press the Ndidi and get my terrain up. Um, they could like protect Ndidi and Giga Drain me, but then I have Fake Out Quiver Dance next turn. Um, Yeah, 
this sack attack is such a monster. You ever seen anything take half from a super effective Fisher's Rend? <laughs> that is silly damage. That's really silly damage. Or silly lack of damage, I guess. Um, Goodbye, indeedy. Ooh. Feels good. Feels good. Stat gets beast boosted. They could Giga Drain here, but like I said, that just gives me. Yeah, they go Giga. Stat does go down eventually, um, but that gives me a free fake out quiver dance, and I can just glide fiery dance um, forever. HP comes back. Yeah, this is just fake out quiver and then glide fiery dance, glide fiery dance, glide fiery dance. Oh wait, no, if you're Giga Drain, you have to protect. It occurs to me. That's fine, I still do this, I think. Um, I don't think it really matters at this point in the game, Blurber. Yeah. Nice! Nice and nice. Okay. Yeah, I... Weirdly, I think what I thought was a relatively minor misplay on turn 1 ended up being quite influential in that game, just because, like you saw, the DD <clears throat> kept itself out of range of, of attacks from Gastro or whatever. I also had Giga Drain Hatchery, which is garbage, but... Um, yeah, if I'd just gone for damage on turn 1 with... Um, with Volcarona, I'd have been in a much better spot. Um, so I could have potentially gone for, um, yeah, go like U-turn Fiery Dance into the instant slot to cover for the switch. Um, and if I don't switch, then I get stack in for free and I'm fine. Um, yeah, so th that would have been slightly better. That would have given me a bit more momentum to try and deal with the Ndidi. Because if the Ndidi goes down, I get terrain control for the rest of the game and Hatchery becomes significantly less threatening. I mean, Giga Drain in Grassy Terrain does decent damage, but it's not amazing. And you don't get that huge expanding force. Anyway, that is going to be it for, uh, for this week and for this team. Uh, hopefully you all enjoyed me using it. I think it's quite a fun team. Um, I think we ran into a couple of matchups that were a little bit tricky, um, but I don't think any of them that we played really felt like I couldn't win them if I hadn't played a little better, you know? Um, I think it's I think it's a, a very solid team. I ended up using the um, trick remote a lot more than I thought I would. Um, Stack Attacker featured very heavily in this, whereas I think previously in testing it hasn't featured as much. I, maybe it was just the matchups I came up against. The Stack Attack was really, really good. Um, yeah, I think you kind of saw some of the issues with, like, Double Grass next to Galarian Moltres was a bit annoying. Um, Rock Slide Lando I becomes very, very annoying uh, very quickly. Um, I think you kind of need to bring Gaster into that matchup, uh, which I, I think I didn't do at one point. Uh, not that it made a difference because my opponent rage quit after they missed Rob Stark in turn 1 which is very funny but um, um, but yeah um, so that's going to be it for this week um, thank you for watching as always if you enjoyed uh, the video please do leave a like and sub to the channel if you haven't already we are getting close to 200 subscribers not huge but you know small steps it's nice to see the channel growing a little bit so if you haven't subscribed already it's free feel free to hop down and do that um, especially if you want to be up to date with all the Scarlet and Violet content that I'm going to be doing. Um, and yeah, go follow me on Twitch as well if you haven't done that already. Link to that is in the description. And I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.